This is the If More Let's Divide podcast. Charlie guys, what's popping? Welcome to the If More Let's Divide season five. And as you know, another week brings another episode um, through and through. Bit by bit, we are going, moving on. Chai Fred, what's popping? Academic fact. Mm, yeah. Starting. Before you go on, you know, say somebody message me, please, please. Say, is it true that you can really kill a snake? <laughs> <laughs> the way people ask me that, too, eh? yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, this guest um, has been on my radar. Special, special, special woman. For, for a very, very long time. Yeah. She is one person that I can never figure out. You know, because it if you do anything like have Everything. like it if you blend easily, Everything. so I'm like, ah, ah, ah. but yeah, today we have her on the podcast, an amazing human being doing dope stuff. Yeah, and Charlie, today we want to get into you know her business a little bit, what she's doing, why she's doing what she's doing. And everything in between. So, guys, without further we do, help us welcome Stefania of El Loco. You already know. Stefania, Charlie, what's up? Cool. Welcome to the If More <laughs> Let's Divide podcast. Yes. Uh, I've been trying to have you on the pod since I think season two or three. Mm. Yeah, but you know, it is my fault. You know, you it's are like, yeah, me, I'm a day. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> But you think you are you you will be fit for season five because yeah our podcast is always packed with amazing people and we know that season five is going to be top tier so thank you for coming onto the podcast thank you for having me yeah. in my in my intro I'm like I can never figure you because you see what what you what you just did like you know I can never never figure you out do you get that from other people. I don't know. Um, actually, most people say I'm very easy to. Yeah, you are very very easy. But I so I don't I don't know. Like I can't tell. Like okay, she's like this or she's like that hmm. because I I know that it will be easy to find you in a church, mm-hmm. in quote, quote unquote, and it will be easy to find you in a nightclub, mm-hmm. and you will adapt easily. Am I am I right? I'm a bit of a chameleon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, Thank it just comes th- down really to simple things. Like mm. you're always around human, human, mm. humans. Mm. So yeah. So so is it is it? Do you easily adapt because of the business that you do, or that that's how you are? No, nah, I think I've been always um, able to just be around a different kind of people mm. um, and find out something interesting to discuss with them or, yeah. you know, connect on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, child, um, of, of the whim, you eat guache with <laughs> granuts. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be no, sour granuts, food. Like, it's going to be sour yeah. food because, Charlie, <laughs> of late, anyone who sees me, Steph, <laughs> it has some just say, hey, a fat oh. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. They're like, but it's nice, so. <laughs> <laughs> or otherwise, you'll be like, hey. You yeah. know, do the gestures. I'm like, mm, life it, is sweet. <laughs> it, 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 it's quite unusual. Yeah. Like, where did you get together from? Like, mixing, was, like, putting granite on your watch. Okay, watches. so um, when I was growing up, we would do, like, curry at home. Mm. And... Um, just have different things you can add on top of the rice yeah, with the curry. Yeah. So your grated uh, coconut or pieces of pineapple mm. or crushed uh, granites. Oh, okay. So those are the options. Yeah. And the crushed granites thing is... You're stuck with it. It may be. It may be. And it's with rice to the same thing. So me, and, I mean, yeah, it's protein. I mean, it's a protein yeah. bomb you're eating anyway. So yeah. it, it's nice. If kebab today, all the better. You add that one. So, too. so that means yeah. you, you can eat anything with nuts on on top. Yeah, I mean not anything, just because. But like mm, I, I like yeah. having when when necessary. Yeah, where it works well. Me, my <laughs> go go to snack was granite. You remember back in the day when we were in school, we would put granite in our pockets, play into 
they will be chewing it as we are walking, you know, on. So I am. Um, when when I was told this, I'm like, mm, I, I've never tried granut with wachi. You should try it. How about with the pepper? This uh, like the, everything. Yeah, <laughs> the, everything. the mix is crazy. Have you tried? Just use the bag, rub them together. Yeah. Then the 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 things will come off all the, the flaky stuff. Mm. Then toss it in the wind. Really? Spray it. Wow. Uh. Wow. <laughs> I will try. I will try. Mm. It's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice addition for me. Mm. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. You you were you were talking about like growing up the the curry that you used to make it and all that. Did you grow up here? Yeah. Yeah. Because k- k- curry to me sounds foreign. I I, I don't remember ever having. I don't know curry, why that became like a family thing, mm. which we are not Indians. You know, if yeah. anything, it should be some Italian something. Yeah. But <laughs> for for me, it was rice, yam, kontumri. Yeah, gravy, gravy, tomato stew, fufu. Mm. Like I think it was just five, six meals that we on rotation. Yeah, rotated. We did like double. So afternoon from the school lunch was Ghanaian food. Mm. So whatever it was, yeah, yeah that's what oh you wow. eat. And then in the evening, because my dad wasn't doing lunch, we have dinner, yeah. and that was Italian. Yeah. So. We what, were, are you are you we're part, dancing, dancing are you are you, are you are you are you part Italian? Yeah, my dad is from Italy. Oh, and my mom's from here. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. I, I thought you were full. Yeah. Don't mind me. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Like, okay. <laughs> so, 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 what school did you did you attend? Yeah. Um, initially, I remember the Italian school, which was in Jowulu, mm. near Accra Girls down there somewhere. Uh, but it was like. One teacher was for the whole school, and one class was a one row of chairs. So class one is one row, class two is another row, class three, and so wow. on. It was a small school. So it was just like a few Italian people who had mm. kids in town, maybe oh, the okay. construction people, and they had like a school in Italian for them. So that's where I started. Um, but then, yeah, they closed it down because like me and my sisters were half the school at some point. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and we moved sisters? to those two sisters. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so from there I went to GIS um, mm. till I finished up at six. Then they started all the GIS people. Hey, girls with GIS, you bad girls. Yeah. <laughs> never knew that you went to GIS. Never ever knew. So, so do you speak Italian? Yeah, I had to. Learn what Italian. is what is Vafranculo? It's not Vra, it's Fra. <laughs> Vafranculo. Vafranculo. Fa, fa. Vafranculo. Vafanculo. Vafanculo. Yes. You, what, what, what does it mean? It's like fuck off. Uh, okay. Yeah. Vaf, vafanculo. Mm-hmm. Vafanculo. Fred, do you know some some Italian? Capish. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Uh, Capish. Yeah, that's already going into like a dialect because uh, it's not like Italian Italian. Oh. Yeah. That's mm. why you have it in the, you know, your mafia movies from the Sicilian mafia. Ah. It's from their dialect more. Okay. Um, mm. okay. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, most of what I know about Italy, if it's not their great products, in a lot of different fields. I- Italian tiles. It's also <laughs> Italian cars, Italian mm. dressing. Design, but fashion. Everything food, about what we know about being. Leisure. Dawn of dawns. Mm. Comes from Italy. Yeah, Italy, Italy. Yeah, cars, Ferrari. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Oh wow. Oh, Maserati. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually true. Fiat. <laughs> Fiat. Fiat. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Have you ever lived? Did you ever live, live in Italy? Yeah, yeah. I did ten mm. years. Um, oh wow. And then I go, one almost try to every year or at least. Mm. Um. Yeah. So the beginning was insane for me. Because we finished school 18 and then they've yeah. sent you. We are going Chilly. to go to university then. Bye bye. And fine, okay. Um, but it's like a small town mm. where I'm coming from. And um, it's like 1,500 people in the town at the time. Oh, wow. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody, yeah. everybody knows what you're doing, who you're with, where you come from, where you're going, like because what you, yeah, what you had for life, mm. Kokonsa, mm. everything, <laughs> everything. And, you know, I, I, in the beginning, I felt very um, just uncomfortable about it. Like, in Accra, no one's minding your yeah. business. You're, you know, doing your own thing. Um, so I was just like, whoa, this is intense. But then when I moved to Milan, because then after that, I went to Milan for uni. 
uh, I started to appreciate, you know, the small town yeah. mentality and warmth. And there's always someone there in case of anything, yeah. you know, you're not a stranger in like the mix, mm. which is what I was feeling in Milan. So, yeah, great city, great for student life, everything and anything did it. Mm. Um, yeah, but then going home on the holidays made me appreciate more. Yeah. But is it is it still small? Is, is your town still small? Is yeah, it it's like it's five people. Um, there should be more than that now, yeah. obviously, but not it's not huge. It's not huge. Um, okay. and the population is even changing. Demographic is changing because mm. a lot of people are not having kids. You know, in Europe, the the birth rates are going down. Charlie, people are still. We are we are here, oh Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Fire. Uh, What's the name of the town? It's uh, Monteroni di Lecce. I love that. And it's mm. the city is Lecce, so. Lecce. And uh, yeah. Um, I am not really sure, um, but there is a more authentic name for the area, which is Salento, and that's what like the place has been rebranded as a you know summer destination and tourism and all that. Mm. So they went into the culture of the area and brought back um, the initial name of that place, which is Salento. Mm. So now you see a lot of I love Salento and you know that kind of stuff around and really promoting most things with that name. Mm. Dope, uh, dope. So Lecce, I think, pff, came from somewhere. I don't know, though. Mm. <laughs> um, so, you, so, your, so your mom is from Ghana. Mm -hmm. Like, from which which part? Um, She's Fancy and Ghana. She's so Fancy and Ghana, okay. Jamestown, Cape Coast. Mm. Dope, dope. Nice mix. Um, so, one, th one, like, I mean, we know what we are going to talk, talk about. Interior design, mm -hmm. you know, El Loco. And everything <laughs> that you are doing. Okay. I hear you. You like the um, lights a, a whole lot. Lights. The, 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 the nightclub, like the, the, this, 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 this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, definitely not where I live. Mm. I like calm, peace. Oh, um, okay. Lighting in like, if I'm staying in a space. Mm. Um, no, I don't know that I know mm. like, that I like. Oh, okay. Disco then, lights. then I got wrong info. But, uh, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I do y like using lights um, in projects because mm. lighting is a big part of things. Of, yeah, you know. yeah. We used to have a building with like, which I still want to do, but we haven't gotten around to doing it. Like, um, kind of like detailing the outline of the building, mm -hmm. you know, using with lights. lights. Oh, okay. So that was one of the things. Um, oh. Yeah, then our parties definitely the string light yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you are you still doing doing your part your your, your parties? Um, so event space has kind of been changing and morphing mm. continuously. Um, so depending on what it is we have to do, we'll find a way. Mm. But it's not official yeah. in any sense like before. El Loco, I was around when you started El Loco. Mm -hmm. I've been there so many times, especially at the beginning when you started your events were dope your store very dope yeah. i was even there a few days ago to buy some stuff um why el loco like how did you come up with that you know am idea that space the um, el loco came like a, as a response to a direct request from a customer base um because we had the t-shirt shop before that um, it was mostly apparel, streetwear, stuff like that. Mm. And the girls wanted real feminine pieces. Um, so that's kind of like the year also I quit my job because I had a day job and decided to do this full time. Um, so El Loco was um, right on, you know, just happened to be mm. needed at the right time. Um, and uh, I think there were also the right brands to start off with, you know, in the beginning. Um, but yeah, it was a space for women of today, how we are caught in between this modern, traditional, um, foreign, local, global, blah, 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 this whole existence that we're in now. Um, in an African context, what was it? So that's kind of the angle mm. we're coming from. Um, and I take myself as a pure example. I mean, I've been born in Ghana, grew up here, went abroad, came back, something shifted, obviously. Mm. 
and you come back hoping to do so much amazing stuff because you see that there's so many empty slots that haven't been filled yeah. or things that need doing and yeah and there were a lot of people like that around at the time um mm. so that was kind of like bringing it in the feminine space um with brands that you know are from the continent and that was a get-go also from the beginning yeah huh. Mr. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, man. first of all the intro I know Mitopu is probably overwhelmed, but you've done so much. Yeah. I don't think if you set out to talk about your the the different hats that you wear, <laughs> you would have gotten through the intro. Intro, with you, but yeah. Your your fingerprints loom, and your 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 personality, your your presence looms large with the culture. Mm -hmm. I think you would agree. I know you're a humble person, but <laughs> the kind of impact that I've seen you. You're one of the first people to inspire me when I moved back home. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you. Personally, yeah. when I moved to Ghana, I was so lost. I've told the story several times, but I've never mentioned you directly in it. But you were the first person I had a conversation with that gave me that glimmer of hope that you can do it because you shared your life. So my question is coming, don't worry. <laughs> Sometimes I do that most of the time. Um, your personality is very chill. You don't seem to ever be flustered by anything at all. And I'm curious as to how and what informs that steadiness. Like It's like you're doing an art show. I'm seeing people freaking out. Everybody is oh, around you, and you're just steady, smiling, talking to everyone. You're never like, I've never seen you. I haven't been around you a whole lot, but every time I've been around you, it's been for an extended period of time, and I've never seen you lose your cool, yeah. or lose your bearing. Where, where, where does that come from? You've been lucky. Ah. <laughs> You've been lucky. Yeah. Oh, there's days when you know stuff goes crazy, and um, but I mean, with events at the end of the day, you've done quite a few, so you kind of know what could go wrong, and it doesn't catch you by surprise anymore. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I get overwhelmed also. It's not like, you know, I think I figured it out. Um, cause there's days when I have to talk to everybody and I don't feel like talking. Maybe I'm tired from the whole day being in the sun, standing and making sure things get done right. Um, sometimes I even miss my party and come and I always oh, everybody, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they show up, you're not there. Then, okay, we'll go and come back. And then not going to come back means I'm going. Yeah. Um, so, um, I don't know, like my cool, is sometimes I'm more um, results oriented and driven, very focused on the outcome that I don't allow the emotions to, to sway too much. Mm -hmm. But I have like really lost my shit more times. <laughs> I've yelled at people. Um, this is probably more during the preparations than during the, the actual program. Yeah. Um, because Chade, it's not easy. Um, we have uh, a lot that can go wrong during an event. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> gotcha. Mm. But you were telling Mutombo earlier that you had a day job. Or mm -hmm. you were answering the question Mutombo asked that you had a day job. And then you decided to pivot to full-time, mm -hmm. being in this space. Um, what would you describe yourself as if you had to put a title yeah. to what you do? Bruh. <laughs> I'm just a busybody. Um, what am I? I'm a designer, really. Um, it spans across different um, types of design because uh, I could do fashion, but I didn't because I sew, but not because I did fashion school. Um, I did graphic design because that mm. was communication design. So every aspect of it, which was fun at the time, new web was new, everything was interesting and hopeful and full of promise. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... Um, I love doing spaces, so interior design is another thing that I love. Uh, I think I just like beautiful things. And when I don't find them, I make them. Mm. Um, really, because, yeah, it has a lot to do with my time in Italy, because you go places and everything is just so beautiful. Yeah, so m different things interest me at different times also. Um, and I don't let any kind of... Uh, preconceived notion of what should interest me be a barrier. Like, mm. 
I'm very uh, boundless in terms of my curiosity where it would take me to go and figure out stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Fred, Fred said you have your hands on m- m- quite, quite a few things. Well, I, I, know, I, I know some, but can you share what you are working with, who you are working with, what you are work- working on with, with, with us? So at the moment, um, the who is really Mm in-house, you know, because Charlie, the in-house team is still building. This is like 15 years on. We are still trying to figure out the right. Well, Mm. El Loco will be 10 next year. Um, Yeah, I know. The local house will be 15. Well, it was 15. So who I work with on my daily basis is my people in the Mm. shop, (laughs) in the office. Um, in terms of projects, um, it's a lot of in-house cleaning, like putting down proce- like the really boring shit, man, mm. like putting procedures on paper, mm. you know, um, you know, the serious hardcore admin stuff because we need to tailor it to our own needs. Yeah. So it has to be personalized. Um, and, uh, looking for m- more space because... Space is an issue. We need more space. For the number of brands coming in are just a lot. Yeah. Um, and there's more applications that are there waiting for replies. Um, so looking for bigger spaces for the store mm. um, and other locations, pop-ups, uh, things yeah. like that. We are, we are definitely going to come to the brands that you work with. But um, you said something. So, so what's the difference between Local House and El Loco? Well, Local House um, morphed from a t-shirt shop, which was all about Ghana, into mm. um, a more street-style urban situation. Mm. Um, but again, the focus has been always Ghanaian brands doing cool stuff. So from that, we realized that you know the female audience wasn't getting what they really wanted. Mm. And isolating that group as, you know, a different category was very important. Mm. Also because then it allows us to have, like, two very diverse types of um, product ranges that we could offer. And uh, women buy more. We all know that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, please, no. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) they are more regular in terms of... Okay, regular, fine. But, um, you know, so you have a lot of regular... Uh, customers that's uh, that's good mm. and um, yeah that's uh, literally the distinction that our local is a more high-end space it has uh, more luxury brands still focused on African production um, and branding and uh, we've let's say tie that closer to the art space mm. um, as well so we used to have the gallery our local which was uh, in partnership with the uh, Open House Studio Accra. Uh, we had a, a gallery that was, you know, the no-frills type. You book for two weeks, you have your exhibition, yeah. there's an opening, the place is, you know, ser- very central. People come to the store, they come visit your, your show. It um, doesn't cost too much. And, yeah, you do your sales or get your exposure, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, then we have Airbnbs also. Oh, wow. Which, um, you got to pay your rent, you know? <laughs> 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 Find a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, wow, dope. So running that so that we can afford the new space we're in. And, and making it fun, basically. Because you can literally do it all, but very boring and, you know, yeah, like everybody else. Yeah. Or make it special and give it your, your mark. Um, should I? So, um, so local. I'm hearing local, 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 throwing through it. Mm-hmm. Is, is your name local? No. So, so, so <laughs> no why, why local? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone thinks like, um, it's local street. I grew up on that street. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's my street. Mm, okay. You have no affiliation to the family. No. No oh, crazy. There's an actual local family. Yeah. Cause, they're, cause they're there. If I they bought, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. they somebody bought because they've gone and. Um, Created a Google Map location says local house original. <laughs> mm. <laughs> original. Wow, petty. And well, like they've had funerals and people are coming to the shop instead of then they're looking for the actual family house, mm. which is like maybe say five hundred meters up the road. Oh, okay. So it's not even far. 
Uh, mm. But we've like it's a local house. That's the name of the the brand. Mm. And yeah, I could see how in Ghana context we would mm. mistake that as the actual house. Yeah. Did you did you cons- cons- did you speak to them like before in naming your brand local house? <laughs> I didn't realize I had to. Yeah. Um, and by the way, when we started, it was, yeah, it was just yeah, a t-shirt shop. Yeah. When we did the rebranding, that was like at the 10-year mark, 2008. Um, a whole bunch of ideas. What kind of name? What kind of name? What kind of name? And like Local House was the easiest yeah. that, you know, really gave the idea of the variety of things that are encapsulated mm. in, the, in the brand. So we just went with it. We didn't think about, you know, somebody's funeral and then they're coming to local house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. I actually thought you were affiliated in, in a way to, to, to local house. No. Because in Accra Academy, my former headmistress was Mrs. B- B- Beatrice Loco. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she passed, you know, some, some years back. And I know that she's from that house. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. She, she, I, I know that I she, mean, she's from I mean, we've had some come house. visit, you know, um, there was a guy when his son came, their locals. Mm. Yeah, well, obviously, they've seen online. The son, usually, it's the younger ones who tell their who parents, tell, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah. and see this place. Um, so, yeah, he came, we had a chat, you know. Did you, did you give them free stuff? Do you give local, 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 local people free stuff? No. <laughs> 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 if I like you, otherwise, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, made, you, you made mention of your, your spot being like in the middle, like say, center, cen- central, right? Yeah. How did you get, you know, well, me, those joints? Well, I, I was I, I arrived there in this world, so mm. that's where I grew up. Oh, okay. Like literally there. Oh, um, so you own? I don't own. Um, so El Loco is a rental. Oh, okay. But across the street where local houses, mm. um, that's like my family's. Oh, okay, um, okay, 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 okay. Cool, cool, so cool, cool. I live there. Mm. I work there. I don't sit in the car. I don't go anywhere. Mm. I don't see people unless they come yeah. there. Yeah. And yeah, and that's literally where I'm at right now. Because Central is Central. You have yeah. the Accra Sports Stadium there. The, even the cemetery is there. The cemetery is there. Trust me, everything. <laughs> the, the Parliament House is there. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. The Parliament oh House is there. Um, Accra International Conference Centre is there. Few, yeah. And is it, it connecting to several parts of yeah, the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you are very... And rare. walking around too is not a nightmare. You know, you can go for walks and stuff. It's not mm. so bad. You used to be able to go to the beach. Not anymore. Mm. They've, not they've barricaded from Castle all the way to Jamestown. Yeah. Marine Drive. Yeah. Property too happy. Well, so far we can't have access to the beach. Like they've closed it off it's totally. Very <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what memories do you still hold from your, from like when you were a child of you know local house like na- like local streets mm. like you know Accra like do you hold any? I mean, crazy yeah, I grew up memories? so. Um, I didn't really roam the streets per se. <laughs> you were not on the streets. I wasn't on the streets. <laughs> you slack. <laughs> uh, so I didn't see a lot of what was going on outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you go to school, come back home. Once in a while, they leave you in school, so you walk home. Um, but that's, yeah, that's as far mm. as it goes. Um, there were no area kiddies we used to go hang with mm. and do stuff with. Why? We had a huge compound from my dad's side and another huge compound from my neighbor's side. So we were living in the middle of factories. So my dad's workshop for like motor vehicles, which was pretty huge. Mm. And it was all military trucks and things like that. So you can climb up stuff, you know, there's things to go and get lost in and (laughs) pull around all the equipment, the, the stuff they use at the mechanics and things like that. And on my, Neighbor's side, they had the carpentry workshop for a construction firm. So mm. there two big cutting saws, piles of uh, sawdust, That's all scary. kinds, fine one, Kelly one, mm. rough yeah, one. True, true. <laughs> um, they had child dogs. There was like horses. It was like, I mean, I didn't need to go outside, really. Then there's the old lady who's teaching you how to sew. Mm. There's so much running around room that, you know, really there was a kids at the neighbors so we used to just swing between yeah. our compound and their compound yeah. so that's that was pretty much youth and growing up and then school i was on all the sports teams and those kind of things because i yeah, we just like moving around obviously mm. our kids 
So lots of after school sports stuff. Like really. basketball. Everything. I mean, I did. I did all of it. Mm. I did a bit of uh, yeah, volley, basket, handball. Hockey was my favorite. Swimming, which I hated. But yeah, <laughs> we're going back. We're going back to swimming because that's the one that would just give your whole body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that true? Yeah, I mean, like you have to steady your mind, your yeah. breathing. Yeah, you know, yeah. getting focus you have to just like do that and yeah. forget everything else so yeah. it's, it's a good space to be in i mean me i swim very very well i am fish but <laughs> I, I i'm always saying like people say swimming will work out your whole body mm. and i get it but i don't feel it okay you know uh, maybe I don't you've done it but you should be doing it like regularly mm. you know like you yeah. go maybe walking every day yeah. you, you take a few yeah. laps every day you know kind yeah. of stuff um yeah yeah so that's so, important. so 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 with your brands the brands that you that you put in your shops mm -hmm. how do you choose those brands and you said earlier that you have a stockpile of you know people yes, on, the, on the list yeah. on, the, on, on the waiting list how do you pick brands to rep in your store so it's um a lot to do with like the aesthetic first of all um uh, i wouldn't go so much into the message but some mm. some of them's message is also important mm. um but generally it's um it's more to do with where you're coming from and who you're trying to communicate with mm. if it aligns with you know our audience um great like we had this girl who is from Tunisia. She's living in Burkina. She's doing T-shirts, which are in Arabic. They're very cool T-shirts, though. And she brought them to the shop, and they've been selling. Like, oh, wow. they did, like, uh, the Accra conference, not conference, the, the Black Star Square, yeah. and wrote Black Star Square in, like, Arabic, you know, um, and things like that. And they're very graphic T-shirts, you know, like, very design graphic T-shirts. So it's like you see these nice culture crossover is happening mm. all the time um which is a key um let's say ingredient in being a successful brand you know within our space and uh, at this time because it's people passing through who have to catch on very quickly on a yeah, message yeah. and there's different ways of you know connecting yeah. um yeah so it either fits well with the local house narrative which is you know streets skates more young generation type of uh, vibe. Um, it's more music oriented and our local let's say it's more art oriented. Um, so we make the distinction also based on those things. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say like, oh, if, if like we turn you down, if like, we have what you have already, you know, mm. and you can't provide any alternative, you know. I, I was actually going to ask, why would you turn someone down like yeah. wh wh what are the reasons why you would turn? i mean if i already have what you're bringing in i'll tell you mm. and let you start thinking outside the box like how can you be different yeah and mm. we've had some really nice comebacks because mm. of that of you know guys who they brought me some denim you know hand painted i'm like listen we have like five brands already doing hand painted denim is there anything else you could do you know, to upcycle a pair of denims. And yeah, he did. <laughs> like, he came back with Hard. like, yeah. And I was like, shit, you see, now you're the only one doing this in the store. And people loved what the, he was doing. It was like an embroidery applique um, mm. stuff instead. And yeah, so you can get, you can get those responses mm. or otherwise, you know, they do what they're doing. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> the food. Um, the <coughs> the creatives that are, are putting stuff in your store. Mm -hmm. I'm. I when I was there, I was looking at a lot of the brands. Let's. I I like to think or believe that hip hop has almost become default global black culture, mm -hmm. if you will. It's a lot of default. Yeah, things. sort of kind yeah. of. So it's like when I'm seeing the. Uh, the Ghana flag or the Ghana map on the hat, like a, like a visor, or mm -hmm. it, it, it looks like, oh, this is our version of that. That, yeah. Or this is our version of that. And it, it seems 
to be like a running team from a creative standpoint, like how things are running. I wanted to know if you thought through that mm-hmm. and what it means, if it means anything at all. And then also, I uh, want to know how you view the, the space in terms of what do you truly want it to represent? Like, I mean, because I'm, I'm assuming you're at the mercy, quote unquote, of the creatives that you are showcasing them. So it's the bandwidth of their creativity that's going to express mm. itself in this space. Yeah. So then, beyond what I asked previously, when you had the vision for local house or a local, is this what you were hoping would manifest or is this, is this something else that you were hoping to see? Um, I'll answer this one first. Um, in terms of... I remember when I started in the very beginning the idea was to have a brand Mm. and the brand should mean something they should exist for a while that's the only thought i had in my head um unfortunately i was with someone who was uh, my partner who was um, thinking complete (laughs) opposites of let's build this and sell it Mm. um and that was not my idea at all i i don't know i mean i grew up on the idea of having a brand that's really dope and you're have this affection for it and so I just wanted local t-shirts at the time to be a brand that people felt something for mm. um, and yeah it did happen because you know the moments which I was my lowest and I just didn't want to deal with everything I was dealing <laughs> with which was uh, having a job and running the shop and then partner also left the country so I was running things by myself pretty much and I got overwhelmed and I was like, you know what, what the hell am I running this shop for? Let me just shut it down. Like, I don't need this in my life. Um, and then you have people let you understand how much the brand means to them. I was just like, oh, it's just a bit of pity. So let's just, let's just keep on going. Let's just dredge this out. Um, and then, yeah, you realize that it would have been a big mistake to shut it down instead. Mm. So I think I've achieved that initial aim of creating a brand um and then with time the growth and all those things you have to just keep adapting and figuring it out you know um as you're venturing first it was one one thing then it's split into two everything is double because you know you you have to run different platforms for everything both on socials both in-house you know accounting and all that stuff um yeah you're just trying to figure out as you grow how how to work things (laughs) Mm -hmm. and um for me it's been a lot of that process um in sense of being an entrepreneur and learning on the job um although i've been in big companies and worked there so kind of have like an idea of how things function because i've always been in a position where i am pivotal and can see both customer side and see inside problems as well. Um, so yeah, you know, everything and every experience is a set of skills you acquire mm. that you can then apply to whatever it is you're doing. And right now, it's just you know, responding to the requests of your customer base, you know, and um, getting them what they need, more locations. You know, I'm also very aware that our customer base is not very local and that's a key disturbance I would say maybe because during COVID nobody was in town and my business, my business wasn't functioning because there was nobody from outside for example. I'm very aware that what we sell are not necessities you know mm-hmm. they are things you come for after your basis <laughs> has been taken care of um so yeah you always try to diversify and figure out different ways of running in um revenue yeah. streams so, so just to go back to the first part of the question to expand on it a little bit mm-hmm. you know like i can use an example to say new york is more timberland boots that's what they're kind of one of their trade yeah. um then you go to the west coast and they're down with the chuck taylors and stuff mm-hmm. and i guess my question was more about because it feels like a mimicking of 
whatever is American hip hop yeah. culture, our version of it. Do you, did you ever think that you were trying to pull something organic out of, say like Abiy Suboy, for instance, and Mutombo be North Cape boy. Yeah. There should, I'm I'm assuming there should be some differences, some similarities as well. This is what I represent. And my question when I was in the store, when my friend was making the purchase was, every time I pick up the hat that says Ghana flag or something that looks like a version of I love New York, I don't understand fully what the cultural meaning is. Yeah, okay. Like I love Accra. It's like, do I love Accra? What mm -hmm. does Accra mean to me? Or should somebody else be saying, I love Kumasi because Kumasi represents something? I think they are those separate identities. I like Kweu people because I know they are business oriented. Kumasi people too, to a certain extent. Girls for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's been expressed in in, in any selection brand. of brands there. Yeah. Well, um, I think there are many layers, you know, you can look at in, in, in this situation. First of all, I, for one, I grew up on Western culture. Mm -hmm. That's what we consumed, you know, yeah. the music. Uh, yeah, there's a, there was always a base of local music, but when you go to the clubs, it's not local music they're yeah. playing half the time. So we've already been brainwashed, you know, at our generation. Yeah. And I remember when I went to Italy, actually, I was very aware of how much my mind was so focused on the West when there was so much else. You know, like for me, I didn't want to go to Italy because I'm going to go into Italy. My, my friends are all going to the UK or they went to America. I wanted to go follow people there. But my dad was like, go learn about your culture. Like, what the hell do you think I'm going to send you to <laughs> some other country which has nothing to do with you? Yeah. So I go to Italy and I realize Italians too. I mean, I went and picked the one country that, you know, people are proud of themselves, yeah. the Roman Empire, and we've done this, and we have uh, Galileo, and we yeah, have Da Vinci, yeah. and, you know, there's a lot yeah. to boast of. Yeah. And I'm there thinking, like, so when they ask me questions about Ghana, I'm, like, kind of scratching my head because there's some details, the way they know the details of their culture, mm -hmm. I'm lacking. Yeah. And I really felt it. Yeah. And I was embarrassed. Mm. And I was like, shit, like, when I come back, I need to know more about myself because, yeah, I've grown up here, but I went to international school, which honestly didn't teach me much about Ghana. Um, I can understand maybe the cultural things and nuances and, you know, some of that, but, like, I didn't read, read on the history and, you know, maybe even not just Ghana, like, before Ghana and pre-colonial, let's even go, like, proper history. Mm -hmm. Um... But you ask any kid in Italy, I mean, at the time when I was there, like, they know their stuff, mm -hmm. and they're proud of it, and you can see that it emanates in all levels of society. There's, there's this thing about who they are, you know? Um, so bringing that back to, you know, like, your conversation on how people are evolving and expressing their creativity now, um, there's some blending, which really, I mean, we can consume as much imagery as we want. We all feed off each other. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say um, some things are like fixed to certain demographic or certain places or locations. Because even some things that we thought were ours are not really ours. Mm -hmm. And when you really, really dig deep into the history of things, maybe it's not even what you think it is. African print. Yeah, I was going to say one. Black Spring. <laughs> you get it. So if we don't do that deeper level of analysis, then what are we really talking about? Because, you know, so far as I know, Wax Sprint was an Asian thing. Mm -hmm. And the Dutch were trying to do marketing Afri uh, wait, with them, but the designs were not to their liking, so they diverted it to Africa, and we loved it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there's, you know, what is really authentically from a place or for people? It's, it's hard to pinpoint sometimes. Um, yes, we are doing a lot of the emulation, which I even say it in the art circles, like everyone's doing portraits. Like mm. every single artist coming out of Ghana right now is doing portraits. And I'm like, okay, like how many more portraits are we gonna yeah. see? <laughs> Black face or dark? 
you know um but because yes you'd be a fool to not take advantage of also exactly um why would you be now the snob that's i don't need the money you do (laughs) definitely need it um so sometimes you know these these are things that determine what is being produced what's going to sell what do people want to buy um because at the end of the day you're still trying to make a business out of it absolutely um and mind you, I had to also do that transition because initially, like I'm saying, it was just build a brand. It was making a loss. I didn't care because it was not a business venture. But then had to now do the transition to this is going to have to sustain me, sustain everyone who's working there. Uh, we need to start thinking differently and operating differently. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you go from that romantic no. phase of oh, it's just nice to create. Mm-hmm. To... Where the money <laughs> okay, now at? you've created. Let's see what... <laughs> like, you have to take care of it. So, um, yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot of the Western uh, influence, but I've also seen very interesting overlays, you know, of uh, unexpected combinations in terms of cultures. So... Keeping on the African continent has been great because it was beautiful to see how much could like be made going to traditional things. Um, Trailer tribes, for example, they do their cloaks using exclusively African textiles, which are the traditional African textiles. So you have your mud cloth, you have your um, kente, you have the name of the brand again. Threaded the tribes. Tri-tri. Oh yeah. yeah. I am too always been wearing that stuff mm. to flex on me every night. Yeah. The hood, yeah. Yeah. I remember he got that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that's something that has come out of mm-hmm. um, looking at a traditional resource mm-hmm. and sticking with that no matter what. So now there's like, there's all the limitations that will come with that. You know, they don't like necessarily produce kilometers of these fabrics on a machine. Is mostly handmade, hand you know, dyed, hand woven. It's it's a lot of work, so it's now a question of you know, how do you work with that um, and interface with the modern market, which wants things today now. I want, I want, you know, it's like mm-hmm. very um, ex- accelerated in terms of how things operate. Um, so it's like also that whole aspect of things, you know. Um, dealing with the challenges and it dictates a lot what you can do. Um, it's one thing to start off with a concept, um, but then the evolution of it, a lot of times is shaped by your environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. No, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, are, are, you, are you doing anything to get more Ghanaians who live in Ghana to buy stuff from uh, from from your store yeah so um for now we've started off a partnership with um uh, ghana enterprises agency um and mastercard young africa works foundation where we are getting involved in being um access to markets for a lot of the brands and companies that they are helping Mm. or assisting so we have been positioned to be a space where those very indigenous local, you know, uh, this one, we're not even going like it's a brand, you know, we are just saying these are people who produce locally mm-hmm. and are really at the, the grassroots um, mm-hmm. of the, the chain. But then you see those who, they really yeah. like take off mm-hmm. and those who are just grinding continuously. Yeah. Um, so with them, we're having a lot of programs that are more local content um, and directed at a uh, different audience as well. Yeah, but why, why, why do you think Ghanaians don't, you know, buy as much as you know people from the diaspora? Is it, is it, is it because of the prices, or it's because of how your shop looks, looks like? All of that, mm. like it's all of that. Um, even the t-shirt shop that was on the roadside. People yeah. always look and say, hey, it's too nice, so we can't go inside. I'm yeah. Like, well, yeah. who told you? <laughs> like, yeah. and we really kept prices low, you know, so that it could be affordable. And so we, we weren't making a profit, but like, we didn't care because I had a job, my partner had a job. It was just a fun mm. thing we're doing. But yeah, you realize that some people feel intimidated to step into a space which maybe they feel like 
Um, it's out of their comfort zone, mm. you know. Mm. El Loco is upstairs, so yeah. really you have to know about it because yeah. you don't see it from the road uh, and just like walking. Mm. Um, so most people who do come to El Loco have maybe had a pre conception they've online yeah. they've yeah. seen it somewhere on a website or you know they've they've had some kind of indication of the place um it's very rare that just walking around in the area mm. they'll enter local house and then we'll send them upstairs yeah. usually mm. okay. do you think that from the question we is asking them I'm, I'm curious to know if you think that that thing of oh this place is too nice too posh it's not meant for us I, is it because of either a lack of advertising to let people know or that has there been any social dynamic where certain people have been made to feel alienated from is it like i'm basically saying is it some level of classism where it makes people feel like that's what i was own. even yeah coming to like come just go on what i was saying earlier um because if i'm talking about the person who says this place is too nice for me i'm literally saying the person who walks in front of my doorstep yeah. the regular guy who um and let me also add that it's been changing mm. you have your young professionals who I and mean, we all buy stuff online you know, so it's like, what's stopping you from physically going to a space to buy? Because a lot of the brands operate online. Right. You know, they'll sell through Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is. Um, it's the physical space which is considered in a different way, mm -hmm. which maybe because we're also not used to s having retail spaces that look a kind of way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the clothes shops that we know, they're always in a container. They're really packed tight with stuff. You walk in and they're pulling things out of all kinds of corners. Um, and it's maybe, you know, where you know you've been going for a while. Mm -hmm. But, like, concept stores that take a whole idea and it's in the space. Like, you'll feel it when you go into it. Um, it takes maybe a little more adventure from your regular guy who, you know, will now come in and see what's going on in your space. We have those who are like that, but... We're not very brave. In Ghana Ghanaians, we like know what we like, what we know. Mm. We don't like going so far out of our comfort zone. Um, and that's, you know, across board in a lot of departments. Mm. So it's like, if it's not something that is done generally and regularly, like now going to the mall is a thing. It didn't mm. used to be. Even then, the first approach is people going to the mall. They wouldn't necessarily go into the shops. Maybe they'd just be in the, you know, the atrium, mm. going up and down, yeah. walking around. Mm -hmm. And going to the food court, because that's for food. That that one we know food. You know, it's always chicken, it's always rice, so it's a safe bet. But you have no idea what you're going to meet walking into a shop that <laughs> is Ghana, but what is it? Oh, that'll go to Oxford Street. You know, then we always have the better option that's cheaper, it's mm. faster, there's a guy I know. So in, in like our local market, there's that whole scene as well. Mm. And um the prices, mm. yes, definitely. They are, there's there's a range, yes, because our local house is the higher end, but in local house you have your range mm -hmm. um, of really affordable stuff, and then it gets much higher as well. So it's it depends on you know um, the area I'm in is also like really you don't have <laughs> the the walk and shop. It's more Oxford Street, which is all tourists. Um, but if you go to East Ligon, it's a different demographic altogether. Yeah. So if I have that exact shop in East Ligon on a road which is as busy as that road I'm in now, it's a totally different demographic. People will be walking in. Mm. I can tell you that already. Because you know, it's, the younger, it's the younger guys who maybe they pop up to go and get a bite. And then yeah. you're next door to whatever. And then there's a barber shop in it. There's more of that... Uh, living in an ecosystem I've seen in East Legon. It used to be at Usu, but mm. now, but everybody used to come to Usu. That was yeah. the thing. It wasn't for Usu people. It was like everybody in Accra before, if you needed something, you're going to Usu. Yeah. It's not like that anymore. So, like, there's different places that are catering to different crowds. And a lot of businesses which were in Usu and have moved to East Legon 
some even shut down the the Usu branch and then East yeah, Legon is, is thriving. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So there's a lot to do with, you know, um, how to attract your customers and our location is good for the foreigner or the traveler. Mm-hmm. Mm. And if I really want to get like again the audience that local house communicates to in Accra, I think East Legon is like the next best space um because Aburi is too far Achimota is what um mm, yeah. you know you have to be in another space where i don't want to be in a mall that's for sure because mm. you know it's not our style yeah. um the rents don't make sense um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's but like you don't, you don't strike me as a person who's purely capitalistic mm. i i understand the need to do business and do business well and let it take care of the people that are involved in the business. That's I don't look at that as pure capitalism as the world defines it now. Yeah. From that angle. But I have seen you involve yourself with up and coming artists, people that were barely known before. You've helped put them on. The fees we all could tell is barely covering anything. <laughs> I just trying to like I mean it's because everyone's starting out. Like how are you gonna yeah. do that? But you know? so, uh, what I'm trying to understand about who you are is that element of who you are doing that almost like you could call it doing the Lord's work. Mm. You are helping people who wanted to express themselves but didn't have the means to do so on a certain level. Do that. It, it's somehow not connecting for me that let's say you're doing that kind of community work, right? I'm expecting that to bring people from all walks of life, especially people who are from the underbelly. Mm-hmm. who we say typically won't walk into your shop because they think they can't afford it. That they can come to the place to do it, watch a show, and all of a sudden it feels like art shows have morphed into <laughs> the bourgeoisie gathering around and wearing crazy yeah. clothes to take photos and go home. Yeah. What what even at the point where you did it for the love of it, let's say that. How did it all of a sudden not connect with the people you may, you may have been trying to connect with and it became a, a bougie kind of Okay, thing. so um, I forgot to omit, no, not to, to add the creative space because mm-hmm. the whole creative space knows us. Mm-hmm. And so that whole audience does come through. Um, and that's a Ghanaian audience. Mm-hmm. But when I was talking about local audience, I'm looking at it in a bigger uh, more general mm. aspect. Um, mm. So, yeah, every young and up and coming creative has definitely been through um, local house at some point or El Local. And um, that's an audience that we have. I mean, I'm not even keeping up now with, you know, I don't go out as much. You know, we used mm-hmm. to go everywhere. Mm-hmm. We're everywhere every time. But We're I'm not. Outside. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're not doing that anymore so it's like we're not i'm not seeing every day yeah. what's going on who's yeah. doing what you know like and they still know about us and they still come and connect which is wow okay that's cool it means like you know we've actually done something um and um like it's like the creative space is not that big anyway you know out here so how would you not know of each other you know at some point you know there's exhibitions there's it's the same five cats. We always see each other in the same spaces. Mm. Um, and then we have the seasons, you know, where Christmas and cool happen to us. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, we all know each other. Mm. It's not that big a, a space. Yeah. Uh, how how did you feel when the skate park was closed, was sh- uh, shut out? Yeah, that was like shit. <laughs> mm. Another space taken. You know, um, and it's always this land stuff, you know, so it's like, ah, I mean, our warehouse also in the back mm. finally expired. We all knew it was coming mm. and trying to negotiate, but COVID came and I was yeah. like, no. So she and even the way the whole thing happened was like, yeah, there was mafia going on, basically. <laughs> <laughs> <Italia>. <laughs> like the guy probably who I'm not, I don't know the facts still. Mm, um, yes, but the guy who she did the paperwork from obviously didn't have the mm. ownership of yeah. that strip as well. So, um, like, shit, that was mm. like a nice space. Mm. 
Yeah. There yeah. were so many nice events going on. The DJ spaces were happening. Yeah. Um, and now it's vibrate. So at least there's still that. So yeah. so the skate park has been shut down. Yeah, yeah, the guy who literally owns that portion where the 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 the, the skate um thing is. He said he saw online when VP yeah. came to Ghana. Yeah, yeah. That's how he saw his property was was a skate park. Like he didn't know about it, so he just appeared out of nowhere. Um, yeah, and came and told them that that's his that's his property. Yeah. And I don't know what kind of conversations went back and forth, but at some point he he came and built a wall and divided his land off. Mind you, that land had been suffering yeah. flooding from the gutter and all those things up to that moment in time there was nothing there was like, he where was he i don't know uh, yeah i, I don't know mm. anyway i mean not to stray too far from but since motomba has brought it up i want to ask because I, I think you have some social not some a lot of social awareness yeah i don't think you're a gung-ho activist activist but i think no. you're, <laughs> you're like right there you you see everything you know even you're, you're engaging and this country has so many different problems that the land issue coming up. I have never experienced the kind of ambiguity or lack of truth to land acquisition like we experience in this country where a whole business can be jeopardized because we have a whole lands commission that's supposed to do a job. Mm -hmm. They don't do it. And then there's this almost angst when anybody wants to acquire property and anything. It's not only them. There's a lot of things running in the background. Well, what do you think it is? Well, I think greed is the baseline, okay. obviously. I mean, that's the only reason why land is being stolen and sold continuously is greed. And um, there's a problem of overlapping two legal systems, which is your chieftaincies and then the government's uh, state laws. Uh, I don't think they always meet well. And um, and then there's just rogues. Like, I've experienced that. I had my people working order and everything was hunky-dory. I hadn't put anything up on the property. And next thing I know, some guys have come and walled the, the land, mine and the next door neighbors, and said he's taking it. Because what? There was a whole issue <laughs> in that area where Lands Commission, families, lawyers, everybody did their thing. And um, they went to court. So there was always a situation where there was a mess, where people had to reassign properties to others. And whenever those situations happen, there's chaos reigning, and people just do whatever. Yeah. So literally, you have land guards going and just ousting people out of a property and putting up a building, defending it with arms, like arm to the teeth. You can't shake them from your land unless you are going to have a, a gunfight or whatever it is. And you are literally watching an illegal building go up on your property and you, you're helpless to fight it. In a nice way, I just want to say that's why I'm here trying to say I represent everything. <laughs> when, you know, when you put on a hat, I, all of those conflicts come to my mind that what does this town represent? Because my experience in the eight years I've been here feels like the front and center of it is corruption in every aspect of it. So my mm. my wearing of that makes me hesitant to say, is that what I'm actually representing? And maybe that's what I was trying to bring to the fore about the branding of this. Our problems, our problems are plenty. I mean, Italy too, mm. they have mafia. Yeah. They don't brand themselves <laughs> as the mafia country. Yeah. They say made in Italy. <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, they use yeah, the craftsmanship, exactly. which is top notch. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so i mean there's there's good and bad everywhere that's one you can't shake it but, but i i guess what i know what you're talking is, about i mean the, the 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 lack of truth and honesty that we are subjected to on a daily basis is just chow it's just chow yeah, yeah. it's like okay so i'm sorry let me just i, I think it's like holding a fake driver's license, right? In, in any jurisdiction, my expectation would be if, say, Mutombo was trying to rip you off by presenting you with fake ID, your initial instinct, if you were, as a business owner, trying to investigate would be, you know what, let me go authenticate it with the DVM, mm -hmm. because that's the authority mm -hmm. on driver's licenses. 
the situation in this country feels as though when you get to the proper body, there's still ambiguity. It's like driver's license can be anything. ID can be anything. Yeah, when we saw That's that with it. the Ghana card, yeah. so I think yeah. there were copies running so around. So is it, is it in, uh, in our DNA? Or, or is it? Uh, human beings are all the same everywhere. I won't say we are worse off or better off. We are all horrible <laughs> across mm. board. Mm. <laughs> We're all greedy. When we have power, we cannot handle it. And most people with power just lose their shit at some point. And that's the human condition. Like, Ghana's own is intense in its own way, yes. But anywhere else, they have those problems there too. Like, there's a different facet of problems that you're going to deal with. And why are you in Ghana? Why am I not in Italy? You know, like, there's a reason for everything. Um, but yeah, we love lying and sneaking and being smart. <laughs> That's what we love in Ghana. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. you see how we drive. Have you seen anybody say, oh, you know, let's, let's drive correct. Runabout, you are rushing into the runabout. If everybody <laughs> rushes into the runabout, <laughs> nobody's moving. Yeah. Like, think, you know, for your, yep. for your people around you, but we don't do that. We think about me, myself. Are, are you looking at opening branches because you were mentioning... East Legon, East Legon. It looks like you want to go to East, East Legon. I mean, I, it's the logical choice. Mm. But I'll be happier if it was outside. Ghana? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Um, well, um, the, the African states, which makes sense, obviously, Lagos, South Africa, maybe Kenya. Yeah, yeah. Um, and start with that and see, you know, mm. um, before moving to Asia, Japan. Yeah, Japan and makes Japan. sense. I've yeah. never been, but it's, one, it's on my bucket list. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, look at it, like, from that angle. Mm. Um, it's the goners, yeah, eventually. Yeah. But then we get more love from outside, so yeah. better cater to that. Yeah. And, and are you, when you move to, like, other, you know, spots in Africa and the world over, are you taking the, the the Ghanaian brands along or you're going to work with brands from... I mean, you definitely have a mix because mm. uh, we are not, like, um, identified as being a one-country mm. type of space. So we have brands in Ghana who want to go outside. Yeah. And that is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many more things we could do, honestly, but funding, manpower, um, all those things... You know, Ghana will beat you to a pulp if you yeah, want to do too yeah. much. Yeah. So you just take your time and do what you have to do one by one. Yeah. Um, last question before you come. So um, back to the designers, back to brands. Um, taking Ghana into consideration or putting Ghana, uh, you know, in the spotlight um, for this question. Um, do you think Ghanaian designers are telling... The Ghana story properly through their stuff. Um, I'm asking this because, so for me, if it's not the Ghana flag, it's the Ghana colors. If it's not these two, mm -hmm. it's the lighthouse or the, the independence, you, you know, you know, ACO, you know. But I feel there are more. Ghana is rich, like you know, you said earlier. Do you think designers are telling the Ghana stories properly or well? through their designs a few are um but i wouldn't say it's a focus um of delving deeper probably um there's you know kente which is easy we know what it is it says ghana yeah. in any situation um but what the brands are doing i feel there's not that necessarily this chasing after being the Ghanaian designer. Mm. There's chasing after being a designer and whatever they are going to express is going to be um, what they'll push because the tourist gimmicky stuff, I mean, that one is there. 
yeah. you know, there's a few brands who are doing doing it and some who have taken it, you know, as a proper high end brand, like this very Ghanaian who that she does the message, it's very Ghanaian. But he is positioning it still mm. into a luxury space. Mm. Um, then there's your jerseys, there's but yeah, what is Ghana design? Um, and what is it that's authentic to us that maybe some brands are pushing? I say everyone's picking a different aspect of our traditions or mm. our culture. So there's maybe going into the weaving and going deep into that and coming up with things which don't look African, they don't look European, they don't look anything, they just look new. Um, mm. And that is not necessarily Ghanaian, but it's born and birthed here yeah, through yeah. our tradition. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of that kind of interpretation, I would say, in terms of what's coming out. Yeah. Um, this um, bridging tech with, you know, the old ways of doing things. Um, and audiences are now not necessarily looked at as my immediate demographic, but it's global because I can literally go online and sell to the world. Mm -hmm. So things are being thought of in, in that type of big big yeah. way, I would say. Yeah. Um, and so it's, uh, it's a lot of factors to, you know, kind of consider. Yeah. The yeah. Ghana message, I mean, yeah, you have I me, mean, it's more than the apparel and t shirt stuff that yeah. I've seen a lot of that, you know. But brands which are trying to be high end, they don't necessarily scream Ghana in any yeah. way. One, one product that I bought in your store recently is a sticker. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I've bought four of those stickers. Yeah. And like my earlier question about, you know, the Ghana, whether the brands are repping Ghana. I love that sticker so much. Yeah, because it does do that. Yeah. You know, Fred, it's a sticker of um, C Cupid. Is it C Cupid? That's Cupid. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> Cupid. Or, or, or one Pounding, of them, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> Staring bang, 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 bang. And you have to look at it twice. It's so pretty. Very, 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 very pretty. Shouts to the designer. Shouts to the designer. It's dope. It's it is Ghana, but it's so different because yeah. that is us. Mm -hmm. Banku is us, and it's different from the red, yellow. It this is a proper sticker, you know. Wow. Yeah, it has uh, that holograph. Yeah. Color how depth. how did you come across the the, the, the designer the, the 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 person who made that? Oh, Anita Anita has Shows. been inside local house since the longest time. Mm. Um, I think I met him through yeah another person in the space, um, photography related. Mm. Because, yeah, we're all photographers. And, um, yeah, just realized this guy is like the dopest graphic designer I've met in my life. Mm. He's so good. And the stickers are just like one thing. Yeah, um, yeah. He did our local house logo. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. wow. Um, like he, he, he's like, I love Anita's mind. It's, it's something that works on like a designer's thinking. Um, yeah. He approaches things with a problem-solving um, attitude. And he gets it. Like, you're going here, you're trying to get this done, you're, all, you're, you're trying to portray what... Like, he gets it. He just gets mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. this type of um, elegance in combining your Banku and yeah, Cupid yeah. is what will come out of this type of person, yeah. you know, who has the skill set to manifest it mm. guys i'll show you the sticker that i'm <laughs> talk, talking about i mean you are you are seeing it now um should i yeah, yeah, yeah. have you have you been following the fashion weeks you've not been following the fashion week so i mean the beginning again everything was fun let's mm -hmm. try hey, ha, ha, hey ha, ha, <laughs> we're going yeah fashion this fashion that and okay cool Met some brands here and there, which, I mean, you'll eventually meet them, even online, just scouting for stuff. Um, my problem with the fashion weeks is that really the purpose for 
the existence of a fashion week is not really taken very strongly into consideration, which is the sales aspect. And I mean, anywhere in the world, because I did go in Milan to some of the big shows. Oh, okay. I was living with a lady who was working for these big brands and mm. she was working for their marketing agency. So yeah, free passes and things. And when you go to fashion shows, literally it's buyers. That is what a fashion show is for. You are providing a lifeline to the brands to make connections, to sell their pieces, and everybody makes a cut. Mm. But our fashion shows here are more of go and buy a ticket, go and see, and then leave. Mm. So, like, uh, I don't know how much is adding to our space. Mm. Mm. Um, it's good to be in the photographs because, yes, there's a lot of online noise that's made yeah, afterwards. Press. There's press. But, like, really, really, it's like the purpose of a fashion show should be to make sales yeah. um, in bulk, not even, yeah. like, the one, yeah. one, one. And because we are lacking that, it really makes me know that the fashion space here is not that strong yet. Um, I mean... If they were to invite even the shops that could purchase volumes, yeah, how many yeah. are there? You get me? It's like, but there's four of us, three of us, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know, in Accra. So it's just going to be the three of us in the front row trying to, <laughs> you know, buy the same things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the space is still evolving. But yeah, that's my take on, on, on all the fashion yeah, shows. Yeah. Um, it's cute. It's fun. I mean, we had ours, but we had it for the purpose of, uh, showing everybody we are moving. Yeah. Um, so that was really symbolic. How did that 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 go? Yeah, it was it was it was a job. <laughs> 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 mm. I don't know. Like we went we went crazy. That was 2022. 2022. Mm -hmm. 20, I thought 2023. Wow, time flies. 22. We we had to leave the building where the gallery space mm -hmm. was, Jamoko. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And move to the building next door. So, yeah, packing up everything. Renovating the other one in the meantime. Um, we literally stripped it from ceiling to floors, everything. Mm. And, um, yeah, so it was a very easy move. Actually, I shouldn't complain at all. Yeah. We literally packed so, things yeah. and sent them next door. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally. Mm. So the fashion show we did was that. Like, we packed up this building and we're moving next door. Mm. So... We we use the road for that. Yeah, dope, dope. Um, so um, so I have I have I have like two questions maybe before Fred Fred comes in. Are you in any way affiliated or linked to Front Back? Um, no, I'm a founding member. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, because yeah, in the beginning was as as always involved in everything. Yeah, around I, I, me. I think that my first invitation to Front Back came from you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had the container which I was running. Yeah. And um yeah, that was again a free space that was given to me. And so I was like, Well, we let's use this space as uh, a pop up container, um, art exhibition space. Mm. And um yeah, we had a different exhibition every month. Went yeah. on for about two years and then I called it quits. <laughs> mm. It was uh, a lot of work just for the love of it. And yeah. Jalen. Whose idea was the light bulb? That was Tarek. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go? No, oh, you did two yeah, two, two questions. So, I mean, th there's totally different. So, Stefan, Stefania, well, what <laughs> do you do for fun? Like, mm. like bring us into your world. We no, want to, fun. We want, to, we want to mix. We want to I'm be a eating. part of your world. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do, um, do for fun? What do I do for fun? Um, it's a lot of family stuff. Mm. Let's just put it that way for now. Um, travel. And yeah, go to spaces I don't know. Um, get out of Accra. Mm. Um, or get out of Ghana. <laughs> mm. And what else? Yeah, dinners. Chill. Yeah, chill. Drinks. Mm. Mm. That's pretty much it. I yeah. wouldn't say. I mean, the clubbing and the partying and all of that. We've done it. Yeah. We've done it. That we abuse of it, crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what again? Mm. Like, I don't feel like being out there in the midst of twenty-year-olds mm. 
and then they think I'm their age. But okay, thank <laughs> God now I don't look that young anymore. But but like, with <laughs> what you are doing, don't you think you have to mix with That's these what I'm people saying. to be trendy? Who like is these people? Me, I've always done Z's. my own thing. Oh, please. Yeah. I've never done anything to please anybody. Yeah. I've been doing what I feel like doing mm. as I felt like doing it, you know. Mm. Um and yeah, you have the appeal to that same group of people yeah. that, you know, are interested in that at the same time. Um and things evolve, they keep evolving, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um I got buried in doing in construction work for like a year. Uh, okay. I liked it. Mm. It's not a problem. Yeah. Um and been catching up with my old schoolmates, which I actually found to be one of the nicer things. Because yeah, nobody nice. knows you like yeah. your old school people and all the nonsense that, you know, you yeah. used to do. It's like, I don't know, I find that kind of laughing with that group of people very genuine, mm -hmm. very freeing, yeah. Yeah. very, you know, safe. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of new people you meet on the way that, bruh, yeah. Yeah. it's not all good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. like, yeah, stuff like that. Um, mm. And then I do research all the time. I love it. On? Anything. Mm. Like, anything. Yeah. Whatever catches my fancy. Yeah. There, there <laughs> is this thing. I got into K-pop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, no, more, more. I know no I Not the music, the, the video, the like, video the, their time. films and, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. some of it's deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's, yeah. it's a whole, whole thing. There, there is this thing that you just mentioned, right? And a few days ago, I was thinking about it. There are friends that you might not like, might not have liked back in school. Mm. You guys were not friends. Then you catch up years after, and you are more yourself around this same person that you didn't like in school. You know? So, yeah, it brings some warmth, maybe you trust them or you think you know them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. than, 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 than this new friend who you just met, you know, you trust the old people yeah. <laughs> more than the new guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fred? Uh, I'm, I'm glad you told me to, to the personal because I have some curious questions of my own. Even though I also want to ask some industry questions before we go, but you talked about growing up your dad having, you know, a, a shop that was basically taking care of vehicles, like a large mechanic shop with military vehicles and yeah. stuff, you said. And then there was also some carpentry shop for a construction firm next to mm -hmm. me. Um, in, 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 in my own curious way, I'm trying to imagine how that has shaped your approach to creativity and some of the things that you're doing, because it feels like you went to school for one thing, and then finally, your soul settled that this is who I am and yeah. this is where I'm most comfortable. But can you then? And then you mentioned the partner that left the country. So I'm I'm more of a listener. <laughs> I try to understand your story, your yeah. life through the things that are not said, and also through some of the things that are said, and. It feels to me as though you lived within the safety of the confines of your own family. You didn't branch out too much. Yeah. So maybe your trust was built around that because you felt safe around those kind of people. And then you have a partner that comes in, maybe kind of like made you feel the same type of way. Oh, I mean, the um, I think it was more a question of timing. Okay. Um, with the the partner, okay. we both were trying to do something interesting. Okay. Um, so he just wanted a T-shirt that says Charlie Y, basically. Like he collected T-shirts, so he had one from you know Thailand, same same, and you know those typical like what you're asking me for. What message is coming from Ghana mm -hmm. that you know? we want us to represent us. And Charlie Why I think, sums it up a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the beginning was literally just that. Okay. And I was, you know, back from Milan, worked in, I worked in advertising. I was an art director in Leche before I moved back to Ghana. And I was missing that creative 
mm. um, side of me. So the shop was just an answer to mm. both of us trying to figure out yeah. something fun to do. Gotcha. But the reason why I brought that up to further my question was to ask you, for someone like yourself, mm -hmm. you run into people from all walks of life, and you semi-mentioned being in safe spaces because of the familiarity and all yeah. that. But I'm getting older. I start to think about... I say it all the time. I, I'm cool if I don't get married. I'm cool if I don't settle down. But I also sometimes wonder, is there a partner? Is there somebody to share this life experience with? Because there's depth to mm -hmm. each individual that makes you feel like, oh, it would be nice to be fully known. Yeah. Or to be fully... Not physically, but appreciated. fully naked and appreciated yeah. in front of someone who, you know, this is my person. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, it will knock on the side of your head or yeah. your conscience that, hey, you know, am I running out of time? Is this person even real? Does they exist? Should I be looking or should I just chill? <laughs> that kind of thing. And I'm trying to understand how you navigate that. As Myself. A, yeah, yourself. I don't want stress. Um, so for the longest time, I've always said children are not necessarily a must for me. So that has not made me rush into permanent situations with anybody, um, without really evaluating how they see me and how they interact with me. Because mm. ultimately you're going to spend the rest of your life, um, I don't know. There's a certain way I want to be seen, and um, I don't think I've met that person mm. so far. So um, yeah, you like you wonder sometimes. Uh, maybe I should not be so picky. Maybe um, whatever. Like you can ask yourself a million questions of the what ifs. Yeah. You know, it can go on and on forever. Even if you get married, it's like what if. And marry someone else, you know, it's not like the final solution, really. Actually, it's just the beginning of a new type of way of being, which you really need to want to do because you're dealing with another person who's real. I find a lot of people just alienate each other um, and not really, I don't know, move forward together in like a committed relationship sometimes. It's like, okay, we're married, so now. This is you, this is me. <laughs> um, but yeah, myself, yeah, I mean, I've been approached by people, been with people, um, but no one made me want to stay in forever with wow. you. And, and so how does that, like when you're by yourself and you think about yourself, how does that, what do you think about yourself? Like, yeah, it's like, so sometimes I'm, I love Okay, let's put it this way. Um, I've literally done everything I want to do the way I wanted to do it. No one's ever told me anything. Mm. Um, so then I look at it. So this is the price you pay. You know, mm. I'm, not, I'm not like I want by force. Everything has to happen. I've literally been 100% free to live my life any way I wanted for the longest time. And whenever I was like in a situation where I didn't feel right about it, I would pivot. Like I wouldn't say, oh, should I have a good job? I don't want to lose a job, which I dragged it out for a while. Like I stayed in my job for eight years before I finally took the jump, you know, into being a self-employed um, uh, entrepreneur or whatever. And I had to be sure of the jump I was making. Maybe I could have done it sooner, but at some point life would just tell you, push, push you and you're going to go and do it anyway. Um, so I see it the same way also with like relationships and stuff. Like, I know I'm very passionate. I can be very deep. I can be very, uh, you mean crazy. I mean, crying out loud. We've all been there when we are going crazy for someone. Mm. Um, but ultimately I need to feel like you see me. Um, and that's through conversation and communication. You can't, it's not physical per se. It's not any of that. Mm. Um, so yeah. The the person, where is he? I don't know. <laughs> 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 but like I see my sisters, you know, they all have um 
they're married, they have kids. And it's beautiful. Like the funny the funny you asked me this. Like the other day I was in the family tree <laughs> and putting things in. You know, so everybody I've put all my siblings and everyone has like a husband and there's 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 kids. And then me, I was just there solo dolo. Just me. <laughs> no connections, no links, mm. no descendants, no nothing. I was like, wow, it stops with it, it like the buck stops with me. Like it ends there, it just stops. Mm. And that made me kind of like, hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Um, but because like there's five of us and the rest of the family has procreated, it's like I feel like it's okay. Mm. It's not a problem. <laughs> it would be different if like you're the yeah. one child and you say you don't want to have children or whatever. It's uh, yeah. uh you know, you know I was reading this thing where it said in literally about three generations you'd be forgotten, right? Yeah. And if 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 I mean I've always kind of felt that way anyway, but I put it in stark like perspective for me, I was like, okay, so you're gonna be forgotten anyway by third generation. No one is gonna be saying your name. But you describing this family tree thing that you're presenting, uh, no disrespect to any of your siblings and what they are doing. Do you f do you sometimes also consider that you've had your own children through all of the work yeah, yeah. that you've done, and more likely than not. They are gonna outlive two, three generations if things are kept, you know, because your mm. work is going to keep on giving. Yeah, I mean, like, like I'm saying, so you've given your all to something else, which is not necessarily a traditional family setup, but you've definitely given your all to something. There will be fruits; it will not die like that, you mm. know. Um, sometimes, yeah, it takes longer generations; sometimes shorter, but. Um, yeah, I mean, you it's where you put your energy, really. Mm, yeah. I love that you consider that because yeah. I think sometimes society, especially getting culture, can be very, you know, judgmental of, especially maybe a woman mm -hmm. that you have to settle. Why don't you have kids? Why oh, but I mean, even people in my age group, like even our own circles, they say, ah, Stefania, you don't have a child, but you should have a child, just have a child with anybody. I'm just like, ah, did I tell you I want to have a child with just anybody, you know. Yeah. Um, or no, but you, you need to pass on your, you know, yeah. <laughs> you need to pass on to somebody. Team. I'm like, yeah. okay, fine. But like who, you know, if I don't find someone I want to do that with, then is it by force? Like, okay. so. I feel more sane now. I feel more sane. <laughs> Quite recently, there, there's been talk about banning secondhand clothing. Hmm. You know, it's been sparsely going on here and there. Okay. Um, and there are people too who are championing, you know, upcycling, recycling, and, and all that. Are, are you for the ban or are you against, against, against the, ban. the ban and why? So I would consider not an outright ban, but definitely putting in place some restrictions as to the volume that comes in, because that's really the problem. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love going to Cantamanto. I find the most amazing things there. Same. So I wouldn't want it to disappear. Maybe that's selfish. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that said, we know a lot of people who shop there, like normal. That's where to go. So taking, I mean, I would rather start with banning plastic than yeah, Cantamanto yeah. and secondhand clothing, really, because... Plastic is really the problem. The rest of it, yeah, clothing gets... Uh, there just has to be regulation with everything. I'm not like for the extremes, yes or no. It's not, it's not, it, it's, it's not an answer. Mm -hmm. The total ban will then create the, 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 contra the, the contraband. Mm. It's going to happen. Because when somebody is used to having something, you want to take it away, there will definitely be a way well, around okay. it. There will yeah. definitely be a way around yeah. it. So um, it's not about the ban for me. It's about just like really restricting what is coming in. Yeah. And the quality of it can also be checked. Mm. But, I, you know, we've sold our souls. So these things happen not because um, it's just buy and sell. You know, mm. it's not, there's the reason why stuff is sent here. Yeah. The same way the way electronics is sent here. The way like there's a lot of stuff that's just sent here. 
because we've been sold that rubbish. Yeah. Like we have to take it in. Yeah. Otherwise, we get embargoed and we get, uh, you know. True. Um, True. Has anyone visited your your shop that got you starstruck? I uh, don't get oh, starstruck so yeah, don't much. Get, yeah, but oh yeah, um, oh wow, you are here, you're like. You oh, know, but yeah. So how did you find about <laughs> you know El Loco or Loco House? Like you know why why are you here? So you are not supposed to be here. It was your return. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that was. Um, we had like Naomi Campbell come through. Oh shoot. Um, but like that year, there was all these people all over yeah, the place, you yeah, know. So it was just yeah. like one after the other. Then they all came, mm. like the whole crew came. Um, Black and uh, the Diplo, Major Laser. Mm. Oh, wow. Um, uh, who again? Letitia Wright. Oh, um, wow. You've had people. Yeah, like mm, people have come through. And some Vic, we don't know. Some Vic, of them are there, Vic, like. Vic, Vic, Vic Mensa. Vic Mensa. Um, Chance. No, he hasn't been. Um, mm. And then uh, who else? Who else? Michael J. White, I think. Mm. It's like, um, so that whole crew of people. And then just generally when people come to town, you know, they'll definitely yeah. pass by. Some I don't know them. Yeah. Like the younger celebs, yes. like <laughs> yeah. some of the them gen- come in, I'll be like, Z. hey, hi, I yeah. don't know you. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not all of them I know. Then the staff will be like, Steph, you know this yeah. like oh shit oh okay okay <laughs> um yeah so they, they they've, they've come through it's just um again they're human beings like i am yeah, yeah. it's great that you came very very happy to see you here um but i make them feel as comfortable yeah. in the space as i do with everybody, everybody else, else yeah, yeah. and which is i think what they actually prefer than the whole yeah. you know um crazy making and, uh, and yeah, all that yeah, yeah. so like i surprised myself like when naomi was there she was in the change room and i was here and it's like whose voice is that it's the voice i've heard before and she steps out and i'm like hi naomi mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it's usually like you be like oh naomi campbell yeah, yeah, no but yeah. i'm like oh hi naomi so she just like turned and i said like she was trying to figure out do i know know you or i don't know you yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah just being you know respectful but Making it still feel yeah. like you know it's a cozy spot. Dope, dope. Right. I'm always following a theme in my head. Sometimes I feel like maybe I'm crazy or maybe I'm not. But your conversation when we talk about um, secondhand clothing had me wanting to ask you guys both that is it the same sentiment that allows us to let them dump whatever on us? Second-hand clothing, electronics, whatever yeah. that allows us to feel that it's okay for us to receive those abandoned goods, let's say, or s- second-rate goods. Mm-hmm. Is it the same sentiment that prevents people from wanting to enter your store? That we think are walking on the streets but won't go into the store because they feel like it's I don't. This is above me. And then we feel like, oh, yeah, well, who are we? We should accept this. Do you think it's the same? I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's a very different, mm. it's a very different world. Yeah. So you are li- making the example of someone who, out of necessity, not choice, has to be shopping at Cantamanto. Mm-hmm. Um, or how, and how that person would feel if they were to come to my space. Um, definitely the experience would, uh, would be interesting. It would be more inspirational, if anything, than, you know, purchasing, uh, joy (laughs) from, you know, buying stuff, um, because, um, first of all, if you're going shopping in Kantaman, so you don't care about the Ghana look. If you want to come and sit, you go and sew that one. You mm-hmm. get me? So if you're going to Cantamanto to just buy anything, it's just because it looks cool. Mm. And it's not necessary. Well, sometimes about the brand when it comes to like the shoes and those kind of things. But yeah. generally yeah. speaking, it's clothes. You don't care. It looks good on me. Yes, no. Um, if you come to local house, you're actually coming to get stuff that means something for you. 
And I think that's the gap in price that design and marketing and advertising and value add and storytelling and all that stuff is added onto a garment which positions it into a different space. So it's still a T-shirt. I mean, come on, at Cantamanto, uh, you can get any T-shirt that says New York or says uh, this, but you will not find one that says Accra. Well, I love the angle that you took it at, but I meant it more to ask that as a nation, that sentiment within us to, because sometimes I sit back and I'm asking, why do our leaders feel like it's okay to accept BS? It's not like oh, they, they care. Or they will make a deal. No, that's the thing. It's not about the care. Mm. A deal has been made. Obviously, the terms were okay. That's that. Mm. The consequences will be dealt with by others. Mm. True. Yeah. I mean, most of our raw materials, also the deals that are made, let's just say they're not necessarily the, 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 the most fair to mm. the nation. But the deal was struck, and somebody was happy. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. So I don't look at the the. It's not it's not a question of it being responding to a demand. Okay. I have a last question for you. I've always wanted to ask you this. This is very brief. When I moved here and I wanted to do fashion for real, um, I was hitting a lot lot of roadblocks. I didn't know where to go to get stuff, where to get stuff done at the, you know, the standard at which I thought was okay for me to pass on. Because I care a lot about the product that I sell to people. Mm -hmm. In everything that I do, I'm worried about is this good detail. enough to take people's money. And I didn't know where to turn. Luckily, I met you through my brother. And I started talking to you about my issues, my mm -hmm. challenges. And you're one of the few people that were willing to take their time to say, oh, go here. I can get you this person's number, you can find this here. And generally in the space, industry-wise, I found that people were very much about gatekeeping information and not helping or even Just wanting letting to things see flow. Like, yeah, yeah. Thrive. I want you to speak a little bit on that, what you think about it, if you know, because you have more extensive knowledge about the space in general. Mm -hmm. And why you think that is. I really don't understand it. Um, I mean, even my own friends do this shit to me, you know, like an opportunity will come around and they want to put themselves between you and the opportunity mm. to siphon or gatekeep or whatever. I don't understand it. Um, I think, yeah, people just want to get the deals for themselves. I mean, at the end of the day, and they will call in who and when needed, you know, to assist on it um why i think the market is smaller than those who are living in it um and uh, big projects don't come around that often mm. so when they do everyone's trying to play it long term you know look for it for not just this gig it's going to have to last me for the next one two three four gigs you know um so Try and make the most, 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 most out of every situation, and sometimes, yeah, to the detriment of real connections and collaborations. Mm. Mm. Um, I mean, that's one way of looking at it. And then there's also those who are just, you know, want to be the proxy. Those who are in proximity of certain people, they want to be the ones that you have to go through because ego or whatever. I mean, there's there's reasons, um, but yeah. Um, I mean, in the space I'm in, generally, there's been collaboration in the production angle of things, mostly. Because uh, even those who do production, I see they do it for multiple people, not just for one. Um, but everyone's struggling. At the end of the day, you know, with a tailor or with a dyer or with a, you know, embroider or whatever. Everyone's, you know, always having something they need to figure out. It's not uh, straightforward. Um, and the bigger companies coming in, actually, it's always a big contract. So someone wants to take it. Mm. That's really it. Stefania, so who are you listening to? Music wise? Yes. Who am I listening to? So I have like two playlists, which are fun. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, one of them. You, you for sham with 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 that. It's, it's called uh, Bonyo Bonyo something. <laughs> Bonyo Bonyo song. <laughs> Bonyo something. I forgot to cry myself. Let mm-hmm. me see if I can. Is it, it out. is it is Bonyo it is pa- it on Bonyo party Bonyo, Bonyo party. party yes I've called my playlist Bonyo party mm. and this is like all just Ghanaian oh, dope, rap dope, dope, dope. rap is it on so Spotify I don't do Spotify you do Apple Music I do SoundCloud oh okay because okay. I like the way you can discover by yeah just true. free flowing through it true. and um, I prefer that mm. so yeah that was one. Um, it's, so my problem with music is I don't know who sang what. I don't know the titles of the song. Yeah, I just same. put them into my playlist and then I play them. So yeah. I know the whole song from A to Z, but I don't know who sang who it. Sang, yeah. And sometimes when I discover, I'm like, ah, yeah. for real. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. like I was listening to this song by Ansa and I, I was just singing this song. And then mm. one day I looked at it and I was like, Ansa, I was like, ah, like. Bad. Jazz super jazz club. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. And I was like, damn, it's his song. Mm. So and I've just been listening to it for the longest time. Dope, 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 dope. Um, but yeah, our local homegrown. Um, what do they even call it now? Afro what? Afro child. Afro is the then child. What is it now? The music the Afro music scene Afro. is now what? Mm. They what they had Alte, then Alte, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's out. It can't it can't play Afro fusion. <laughs> Afro like house. the whole Afro already just Afro R and B distorts <laughs> it already distorts yeah. what it is because yeah. as soon as you add that Afro it just takes you somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it has already put you in a subset of I don't like that whole you know definition of things mm. like um, I know we need to identify stuff yes I get it but sometimes we're just slapping on the same label without really it having the meaning it's supposed to. If you are to give a label, sorry, my, my last question. If you are to give, from what you just, if you are to give a label to your spirit, what would it would it be? Me, my spirit. Mm. A label, like a one word thing. Yeah, like a tag. Like. Right. Well, they've always said crazy, so we we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> dope, dope, <laughs> dope, dope. Charlie, guys, Charlie, we thank you for sticking with us um, throughout this episode with the amazing Stefania. <laughs> Charlie. Mm. Personally, I have uncovered a few more things. You know, I know her more, I think. I know that there is more to, to uncover. Charlie Fred. Yeah, Ste- Stefani, you're here in front of us now. Mr. was already said thank you for coming, but I really, really want you to feel the love that you represent to a lot of people. I've spoken to several people about you since I've been in this yeah. country in the past eight years, about how much of, even though it was a short space of time, your impact was mm-hmm. very much positive for me, and I took it and ran with it. But since then, I've spoken to multiple people. And every time your name comes up, it's nothing but love. Good things and, and love, people, yeah. oh. people really do appreciate you. And I, I think you're <laughs> one, of the <laughs> one of the people that culturally, socially, we want to hold up and let you know, Charlie. Big up. Thank big you. up. Big, big up. up for big everything up. that Thank you, you do. For every artist that can't get the even platform to say thank you, but I know they're grateful because my own brother, who is, I, at this point, I call him a recluse. <laughs> and I, I remember having a conversation with Stefania about how do I get him out of his shell? And she was so nimble and not over the top about it because me, I was intense. I'm like, Charlie, the guy who won't call, what's up? And she was just like, Charlie, just, you know. And his first show was at yours. Yeah. He was very comfortable. And then the next few shows after that, I could see his discomfort creeping back in. And so, anyway, just thank you. I mean, you're a very <laughs> impactful person. And yes. I, I really wanted to tell you that, that I, I love the kind of love that you put into the universe. So, shout out. God bless. Appreciate it. Keep, Allah, keep, Allah. Going. Allah. keep going. Allah. <laughs> Allah. Allah. Charlie, you. guys, Charlie, you guys, you have to subscribe 
check out a local local house you know they are on the local road yeah yeah you can't miss it can't miss it <laughs> google, google will help you charlie you have to go and check out not too far from the traffic light. Yeah. Most prominent like, place on the street. Yeah, you can't miss it. Go and check out the space, mm -hmm. you know. And yes, we too, <laughs> you have to check us out by subscribing, Please. by following, and by sharing this podcast with your I family. I want to ask a question. Friends, yeah. Let's, if, if let's more divide. You just took me back to maths. Like, what's that about? Uh, if more, let, let's divide. <laughs> Oh, it's math, math basically. We we, we, we we want money. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so basically, if there is a topic, we should just say that. That was, that was, it, that's still, I still can't believe he came up with that name because I think yeah. he's so genius. Yeah. But maybe because you're a poet and a writer, that yeah, I shouldn't yeah. give you too much problem. But it's just fucking, <laughs> it is a fucking amazing thing. Yeah. Like, I'm so proud of it every yeah. time it comes up anywhere. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And you remember it, like, you can't forget it. Yeah, like, yeah, you just yeah, remember yeah. it. Was Especially if, if you went went to school in Ghana, <laughs> and, yeah. and you love. So if you went to school, board mass, board yeah, mass. Because <laughs> there's other representations of it in other. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 and true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, guys, shy. We thank you and Charlie. The F more let's divide, Fred. Yes, sir. We are through. Booyata. Chai B.